First off, Ian, again, welcome to Liberty University. Before we talk about your start here in Lynchburg, I want to get to know, Ian, who the person is. I think it's always sure. important that we kind of get to know how people got to where they are. And for you, one of the first things you told us in your press conference was you're from Canada, yes. grew up in Burlington, and from there, give me an idea of your childhood, what it was like growing up there, and as eventually you went to school in Canada, what was your childhood like, and sure. did you always want to work, work in sports? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I've all, also uh, met quite a few Canadians here at Liberty, which has uh, really been a pleasant surprise, but uh, I did. I grew up just outside Toronto in Canada and uh, grew up uh, like a lot of uh, lot of youth, uh, playing a lot of sports in, in Canada. Uh, ice hockey's big, so I played uh, ice hockey, baseball, soccer primarily growing up, and uh, um, knew at an age, um, you know, in my teenage years, that I wasn't going to be able to make a career out of playing uh, playing sports, and really had a, a passion for business as well. And so, wanted to combine business with sports, and I was fortunate to have a chance to go to Laurentian University, which has a sport management program, and really combine those two passions, and and ultimately turn that into a, a career path. You ended up getting your master's at UMass Amherst, and. When you graduated from Laurentian, you went to the University of Maine uh, to start working. When did the thirst for specifically college athletics kind of hit you? Yeah, Alan, I had a, had a taste uh, during my time at UMass of doing an internship in uh, the National Hockey League with the Hartford Whalers, who, who uh, are now the Carolina uh, Hurricane. And uh, uh, had a taste of pro and just didn't enjoy it as much as being around college student athletes. I just really uh, uh, enjoy watching the really the transformation of student athletes between the age of 18 and 22 when they come in as freshmen and just the maturation athletically, academically, uh, spiritually, socially that you get to observe. And uh, uh, that's something that really uh, drives me. It's something that excites me. And uh, that's really why I've decided to make my career in college athletics. How did you end up at Maine? First, op first job opportunity, quite honestly. I was uh, at that point just looking for a job and uh, had a chance to go and work at uh, the University of Maine in media relations. And uh, that's how I got my start and uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, worked with uh, a nationally ranked uh, ice hockey program as well as uh, um, a top 10 football team at that point in time. So uh, great opportunity to get into college athletics and work in an area that I was really passionate about. You mentioned media relations and learning more about you you've run the gamut with what you've done in college athletics. Starting in, in PR, as I like to call it in some ways, yes. you, do you have a better appreciation for all the positions in college athletics, knowing that you've kind of had your hand in a lot of them? Yeah, Alan, that's one of the things I was really blessed with. Uh, my, uh, the AD at Maine, my mentor, Kevin White, who's now the athletic director at Duke, I really exposed me to a lot of different areas. I started off in media relations, and then he moved me into marketing. I did corporate sponsorship. Uh, I followed him to Tulane where I got into development work and ultimately became a, an interim a athletic director for a period of time. So his ability to kind of move me around, expose me to different areas, uh, really allowed me to uh, advance from a career standpoint much quicker than I would have otherwise. So I'm, I'm indebted to him, but uh, it, it also did give me a unique background uh, because I, I've sat in the chair of a lot of staff members. So when I interact with someone in media relations or marketing or development, I've been in that chair and I understand what the job's like. You mentioned Kevin White, who's at Duke now, and, and for me in my position doing what I do, I've had some mentors that have kind of taken me under their wing, and I think it's invaluable for whatever line of work people want to do. For you, you mentioned Kevin on a number of occasions, conversations we've had. How important is that to have one or two people that as a young professional growing up to kind of show you the ropes. How important is that to you? Yeah, I think it's really critical. And, and uh, you know, without him, I don't know where I would be professionally, quite honestly, but uh, to have those people that really uh, invest time in you, pour into you, they can uh, not only uh, help you from a, a career standpoint, but they really share their values, share their ideas, uh, I remember a lot of uh, just taking car rides uh, from Maine to Boston with him, and that's a fairly long ride, which we did quite often. Uh, just learning the profession, really, from him was uh, something that was incredibly valuable. Your roles expanded in 1992, Ian, when you went to Tulane, the five years you were there at Tulane. Give me an idea of the experiences you had there as you continued to develop. Yeah, I had a chance to oversee external affairs and uh, uh, some marketing, corporate sponsorship, media relations, and then transition into development. And uh, most athletic directors, it's really valuable to have some fundraising experience, so uh, that, that worked out really well. Also had a chance to supervise their, uh, their football and basketball programs. Uh, at Tulane, we, uh, we hired Tommy Bow 
Loudon, who had a great turnaround uh, at Tulane, led them to an undefeated season. And uh, basketball, Perry Clark was the, the basketball coach right then and had uh, a lot of success taking them to the, the NCAA tournament a couple times. So very good run there, learned a lot, and then finished with a stint as uh, an interim athletic director, actually Sandy Barber, who's the AD at Penn State, Right now, myself, we're co-interim athletic directors for about six months, and uh, we kind of shared the leadership after Kevin White left. You mentioned your time at Tulane, which again started back in 92. That was kind of the start of what you would call the, the third-party rights holders, the ISPs, the Learfields. Those really started to develop at that point in time. In the last 25, 30 years of college athletics, where have you seen the biggest change in what we do uh, from a business standpoint, from a fan experience standpoint, I guess maybe since your time at Tulane. Yeah, well, that, that's definitely one. The outsourcing of, of different uh, responsibilities in the athletic department uh, has certainly changed a great deal. But I think what the biggest thing that's changed is television. Television's just changed everything in terms of uh, uh, the resources that uh, that are brought into college athletics right now, the tremendous exposure, the ability to, to build the university's brand. Uh, that, that's been the number one change, and it, it's affected everything from um, the visibility of a program to salary structure to uh, really the competitive nature of college athletics. So uh, that, that's been the game changer. Liberty is your fourth stop as a full-time athletics director. Your first one came in 97 at Northeastern. How excited were you to get that first opportunity to lead athletics department? Yeah, that was a really unique opportunity for me at Northeastern, and uh, I was 34 years old and probably wasn't ready, even though I didn't realize it at the time, but uh, it gave me a chance to uh, to lead a department for the first time, and uh, I really enjoyed that. We had great uh, great coaches, great staff, and I think we're really to do, able to do a lot in terms of building that program, um, and uh, certainly look back on those, uh, those days very fondly. Um, and... Uh, uh, you know, really, again, the, the thing I recall the most is after about two weeks in, just wondering, wow, this is this is different when you're you're in the chair as an AD as opposed yeah. to being an associate where you can make recommendations, but you've got someone there to make the final decisions. Uh, it really changes things a lot, and you learn a lot about leadership uh, in that process. And then you moved on to UMass for one season. What was that like going back to a place that you got your master's from? Yeah, I was really excited about it and actually planned on being there a long time. I thought that was a place uh, I could have a, a extended stay stay at UMass and and uh, had a lot of uh, a lot of friends and colleagues that I knew and and it was uh, again a um, return to your alma mater is special and and uh, we were uh, off to a great start um, but then I unexpectedly got the call from Baylor and then you were in Waco for 13 seasons uh, unprecedented success leading the Bears program you and I have talked about your success there when you look at the relationships you built there and the success not only on the field but the community in the classroom which is most important what do you take away as your most proud accomplishments not just personally but as your staff there in 13 years at Baylor yeah just a tremendous transformation we know where that was uh, in in 2003 26 million dollar budget and uh, really kind of a struggling athletic program at that point we weren't winning very much um, had a lot of challenges just about in every area and to, to see how uh, I think in the first five years we went from not very competitive to, to good and then from good to great the, the next five years or so and uh, uh, you know really um, uh, having the opportunity to hire, hire and work with some great coaches uh, extraordinary student athletes but uh, I think that the biggest takeaways I have were um, you know people talk a lot about the the national championships and the big 12 championships but um, student athletes did a great job in the classroom 3.34 grade point average highest on record great sports ministry program and uh, really uh, um, you know, we, we put about $400 million into new facilities and a lot of fundraising success. So it was, uh, it was a lot of people coming together, working as a team, and uh, that's what I remember. All right, Ian, <laughs> fast forward now to, to present day. You've been here two weeks. Uh, let's back up a month or so as the communication started to develop between you and uh, President Falwell and even Grant Taft, who we all know is, is a legend at Baylor, not just there, but around college athletics. You were doing some consulting work, and you had mentioned that Grant kind of got you connected to Liberty. Give me an idea of the communication that you had with President Falwell and visiting here and ultimately accepting the job here to be the new athletics director. Yeah, Helen, I was uh, you know, working with Eastman Bodine, as you mentioned, and Bob Bodine and I are good friends and really had planned on staying there through uh, next summer, probably even the next fall, and I was really enjoying it. It gave me a chance to, to work in college, but in a little bit different way as a consultant. So that was going extremely well. Really was not uh, looking for an AD job in any way, but uh, Coach Taft reached out to me and uh, and said, you know, there's, there's an opportunity here at Liberty. 
and uh, I just think it really fits you well. And uh, um, it, it, quite honestly, that was uh, that was the biggest uh, um, point that he made was really the fit. And uh, because I really I was looking forward to kind of taking a year away from college athletics before getting back into it uh, as an AD, and uh, uh, certainly gave me something to think about. And then uh, President Falwell uh, uh, has great sales skills and and uh, reached out to me and and uh, really encouraged me that this is an opportunity that made a lot of sense for me and, and I would fit very well in the, in the culture of liberty and uh, one thing led to another and here I am. Within the first few days of you accepting the job, Ian, I had a number of texts and phone calls and emails from colleagues of mine that know you professionally and some of the descriptions I heard about you, integrity, liberty hit a home run, visionary. When you hear your colleagues and cohorts talk about you like that, how does it make you feel? Well, it's very kind, and and again, I, I've been blessed to work with some incredible people, Alan, through the years, and and uh, um, that that's really the, the biggest thing. I mean, no no one person can lead an athletic department. It takes a lot of hands, and uh, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of great people who uh, are much smarter than me and much more talented than I am. But we've been able to kind of come together as a team and accomplish some special things, and that's that's certainly what we're going to look to do here at Liberty. As you look at some of your goals, you talked about training champions for Christ, world class experience for student athletes, and achieving a victory with integrity. Are those independent of each other? Are they exclusive? So when you talk about those three, what else can you tell me about them? Yeah, that's really compatible. That's that's going to be our vision is, again, to, to train champions for Christ, um, to provide that great experience for our student athletes where they thrive athletically, academically, spiritually, and socially, and then to achieve victory with integrity. We want to win, but we're going to win the right way. So uh, that's going to be the vision we're going to cast for this program. And again, really, I think that where I view Liberty Athletics going is we're going to become the premier Christian athletic program in America, uh, very much like uh, Notre Dame is to the Catholic community, BYU is to the Mormon community, and uh, this program is one that has a very high ceiling, and we're looking forward to realizing that. And you've built strategic plans pretty much every stop you've gone along the way. How do you do that? Why is it the right time to do it here at Liberty? And how long does that typically take? Well, it, it's really fortuitous because the university is going through that process right, right. now. So we're going to fold right into that. And uh, so really it's a matter of casting a vision, putting together goals, and then identifying the action items that we're going to need to achieve that blueprint and, and reach the vision. We're looking to do that over about the next six months. And uh, uh, early days, Alan, are certainly going to be spent uh, listening and learning. But uh, once we become a little more comfortable, um, we'll start to put together uh, you know, the, the items that we feel we need to accomplish to, uh, to get us to where we want to go. I want to go back away from the business again and talk about your family, yeah. your wife and four kids who we met at your introductory press conference. How'd you meet your wife yeah. and give us that story and give us a tidbit on your kids and kind of what they're up to right now. Yeah, well, Heather and I met uh, in Maine. She was born and raised there, played uh, collegiate field hockey at the, the University of Maine, and uh, she was uh, teaching, and uh, we were set up by uh, one of her best friends, one of my best friends um, uh, really introduced us, and I, I at that point hosted a, a Bible study. I owned a duplex, and uh, mm -hmm. the guys met downstairs, and the women met upstairs, and uh, really through that, uh, that Bible study is how we really got to know each other and uh, became engaged, got married, and then three weeks after we were married, uh, we moved, I moved her to New Orleans. So <laughs> I don't think her parents have ever forgiven me for that, but uh, um, that was how we met. And uh, we're now four kids later. We've uh, got a wonderful family, uh, three, three daughters, one son, and uh, uh, they're all doing extremely well. As we wrap this up, Ian, if you can tell the fans, uh, the, the, the supporters of Liberty University that are watching this, uh, kind of your vision for this department, what would you tell them and what have you told the people you've met since you've been in town? Yeah, Alan, what's really going to be key for us is we need to rally everybody together and uh, really unite the, the Liberty family and uh, if we're going to achieve all the goals that we have. We have great coaches, staff and student athletes. Obviously, you know, they work at this every day, but we need our alumni, we need the Lynchburg community, um, we need our, our donors, uh, Flames Club members, everybody to really rally around this program. And uh, if we're all in together, uh, there's going to be some really special things happen here over the next several years. That's new Liberty Athletics Director Ian McCall.